All right, today we're going to talk about the neuroscience of now, of this moment. How is that processed in your brain? Why is it so difficult for us to be present? And how can we live in the present moment in our daily lives? Every spiritual tradition, every kind of mind training culture throughout history has talked about the power of presence. I think it's become kind of a platitude and we hear it in book titles like Be Here Now by Ram Das and The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. But what does that actually mean to be present and why is that so challenging for the mind? It's, it sounds nice, you know, live presently, but then the mind goes a million miles an hour into the future and past. Why is that? If we look at the brain and how it's processing information, there is one paper which I've linked to that's uh, talking about how our conscious experience is actually about 0.2 seconds delayed from any kind of sensory input that comes in. So for example, when you see something, the, the contact of the eye with that uh, sensory information with the photons, by the time it makes it into your conscious experience of what you're perceiving, that's, it's already been about 0.2 seconds. It's like a delayed broadcast when someone's talking live on the TV, but it's really coming a few seconds delayed. As another example, the saccades, the little eye movements that we make, we do this unconsciously mostly, and they're kind of scanning. When the eye makes these little movements, it's only staying still for less than tenth of a second usually. So our default condition is one of scanning for threats and potential rewards in our environment, something we evolved to do in order to stay alive. And in general, when we think about how the brain works, it's basically a prediction machine. Both of those things I just talked about make sense in light of the fact that our brain is constantly trying to predict what's going to happen in the outside world, and it's constantly updating its internal model of how it expects things to be. And we'll get more into the details of how this works, but it, it explains why it's so difficult for us to be present. I like this quote by the monk, famous scholar Bhikkhu Analyo. He says that our minds, quote, reach out for the next moment to take the next spoon of experience before we have really swallowed the present one. Now, that's something that we can notice we're doing while we're eating our meals usually. The mind's already skipping to the future and uh, or replaying the past or wanting the next spoon. But also in any given moment, it's like it's reaching out for something, expecting the next moment to be better than this one. So given this built-in predictive making machine in our brain, it's actually a heroic feat to become truly present, to come into the here and now on the deepest level. And we'll talk more about how that unfolds and how to use meditation to train your mind into deeper and deeper states of tr being truly closer to the now, which is, as we'll see, it's hard even when it feels like, okay, now I'm very, really present. The brain is still predicting a little bit. In the framework of yoga, in the ancient yoga text called the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, these movements of the mind are called vrittis, or mental fluctuations. And one of the definitions of yoga given traditionally was not always about moving the body and stretching. In fact, those were later, those were later adoptions from mostly gymnastics poses. Yoga was traditionally about training the mind. And one, one definition given in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali is Yogas chitta vritti niroda. Yoga is the stilling of the vrittis, of the mental fluctuations. And in um, Buddhist psychology, this can be related to craving, the mind's constant wanting things, wanting things and thinking things, and these urges we get all the time. So now, how can we live truly present throughout the entire day and then also training in our meditation? Well, that's what you're learning here. That's what you're training. Every time you sit down and when the mind wanders off and you very skillfully bring it back to the present using the four R's, 
So you recognize that it's gone, but it's been distracted. Then you release the distraction and you relax any tension that came with it. So now the mind has learned, you've recognized like, oh, that's that distraction is actually not very fun. Sometimes the mind thinks about pleasant things, but for the most part, it tends towards negativity. And then you relax that and you show it a new way, a relaxed way of being in the moment. And that's the relish step, number three. You enjoy that, that moment of peace. So you're feeding it the new, that's kind of the reward. It's the new information that you're training it to see that it's, it's very nice to be in the present, but it just needs to learn. And then the fourth step is to remain. You remain present, both by being with that peaceful feeling or the metta that we're developing or other positive feelings, or in the terms of daily life, that means really remaining in a calm lifestyle, a meditative lifestyle. So on the macro level, throughout your entire day, every time that you notice that your mind is not present, that it's not with whatever you're doing, you can take that opportunity to recognize, release the distraction, release whatever it was expecting or predicting or believing in that moment, all those very heavy, all that heavy emotional baggage that often causes it to get all worked up. And then relish in letting that go. Relish in the feeling of being kind of present and just letting all that flow through. You can't get rid of it. It's much, this is much easier said than done because the tendency when we notice all these things in the mind is to try to fight with them and try to push them out. But we can relish in the, the fact of bringing up a wholesome state of mind and the smile really helps with this. And then remain is the fourth step, which again is uh, cultivating a full lifestyle of being present, of being meditative, of helping others. And we'll talk about how, how all these pieces fit together. Now, when you are meditating, or even right now as you're listening to this, can you notice that when the mind wants something, when the mind wants to be out of this moment, there's a little bit of tension that comes with it. People often report that they feel it in their forehead or sometimes around the face or neck area. And as you train your mind and your awareness develops, you'll see that this subtle tension comes with distractions. It comes with when the mind's out of the moment. And it can be an indicator that you should come back and release and relish and remain. So this is the kind of biofeedback mechanism that can notice, that we can notice, and that when we relax it, it will help us remain present for longer periods of time. If you're on the FitMind app, this is one of the qualities that you're rating every day in the mental fitness survey. It's samadhi, this ability to have continual presence. And that will develop. At first, it's just little moments here and there. And with time, as the lifestyle comes together, the mind will stay present longer and longer. So today's daily challenge is to use these four R's at least five times throughout your day. Now the hardest part is just to remember to use them. Then they're actually quite fun. And if you can use them dozens of times, that's even better. Your progress will be very fast as you make this more and more of a lifestyle, cultivating awareness and bringing it together so you can be more in the present moment. If you have any questions about your practice or what you learned here, please let us know. And this course is provided by the FitMind nonprofit. Our goal is to make mental wellness widely accessible through deep meditation and an understanding of ancient wisdom. So I'll see you here tomorrow for day three of the course, where we'll learn the most powerful technique of meditation that I've learned and the science behind it.